Hello, Scorpio. I hope everybody is having a really good day. Um, and I'm so grateful that you came here today. We're going to be looking at your uh, May forecast. As always, though, this really spans about six to eight weeks. So for those of you joining here live in April, um, a lot of the messages actually should resonate, especially the beginning portion, which is channeled. So welcome. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. And let me talk a little bit about the way that I structure these readings. First and foremost, I'd like to just say that you can use this for your sun, rising, and moon. You can also look at other aspects of your chart, such as Venus, for instance. And um, the very beginning, I'm going to put Apollo down so we can talk. The very beginning portion, uh, which I've laid out here on the table, is something that all of us can benefit from because um, if you show up in the room, I start to channel messages for you. <laughs> Just laughing at Apollo in the background. Uh, so the, the beginning portion is really for anyone that's present. The second portion that I'm gonna get into is going to be the Celtic cross where I uh, basically allow any sort of messages that need to come through to come through. I don't solely focus on love and romance because we're all at different stages in our life. I also think that if you solely focus on the other person, you're neglecting the work that really needs to happen because people in your life are mirrors of you. So uh, the way that I read is that we focus on what's going on in your life, what's going on around you. If people play a role in that, I'll pick up on it. If not, it's gonna be about personal growth. The, the stronger you get, the brighter you get, the better everything is, including your romantic relationships. Um, so that's my perspective on that. Um, as I expand the forecast, I will look at areas like health, wealth, love, and um, also destiny, which is your current trajectory. So that's kind of the holistic view that I take on this. Um, occasionally, I will do separate reads just for uh, love and romance. But uh, for the general, the focus is on personal empowerment, personal growth, and then the relationships will kind of factor in as needed. Uh, after we do the, uh, the channel messages, Celtic Cross expanded forecast, then I go into a quick mini review for anybody who's joined later. If you just forgot what I said earlier, um, I pull it all together. And then we go deeper into the soul path. And the soul path is a chance for us to look at one or two areas of either growth or resistance for you, plus like a wild card. And then we'll meditate, bring everything together. Uh, it's usually like a two minute meditation. And after the meditation, we will uh, do something special, which is uh, brand new. It's called the final card, where I will pull one last card and answer a question that you might have. You just kind of meditate on it, what it is, and I'll look at the energy around it uh, as a yes, no. And then also I'll go a little bit deeper into some of the other sort of nuances of it. So a lot that happens here in the course of about an hour and a half. Um, I do put timestamps up later. Uh, but give me some time. Sometimes people want it up immediately when this goes live. So I've been here doing it with you. There's no way that I can do that. So just be patient. And that will happen usually um, by this evening. Okay. So let's uh, let's get started here. A uh, couple of notes before I get into talking about your channel messages. Quick one at the beginning. I usually only mention this like two or three times. But uh, if you want to help this channel, the best in, uh, way that you can do that is by hitting the like button once. Um, throughout this reading. The subscribe button also just once in uh, your lifetime. You don't have to, if you keep hitting these things, it undoes it. So if you've already subscribed, just thank you so much. If, you, if you're brand new, subscribe because you never know how the algorithm works and this will allow you to, to, just to keep in touch with me. Um, and again, any video you can like it once. Uh, and then the other way that you can show support, if you wanna give back in a uh, consistent way, you can click the join button. Or if you just wanna do a one-time contribution, there's this little super chat icon right here. Uh, I also have Patreon uh, uh, option if you want to do that. People ask me all the time and also my moderators, what's the difference between Patreon and the join button? It's easier to join. You get icons if you do it. You can start and stop at any time. But with Patreon, you can do as little as $1. You can set your amount. Um, you get the same perks minus the emojis. Um, but when in doubt, just join here because I can see it and it's easier for you. I think it's the better option of the two. Um, but Patreon is great if you're on a budget. And, um, and I like it just as much, so either one is good. Okay, uh, let's get started. And I'm gonna pull my iPad here so we can talk about the totem that came through. Uh, when I do channeled messages, I like to start with something that I've seen in dreams or uh, meditation. Last night, I was visited by a couple of animals in my dreams and meditation. And uh, the first one that I saw was this little white cat. It was really cute. It looked kind of like a kitten to me. Uh, I'm not much of a cat person. I mean, I actually owned a cat as a kid. I, I prefer dogs as an adult, but um, my first cat was a tabby and I loved it. Um, but this cat kind of won me over. It had this wonderful charisma, little white. I couldn't tell if it was a kitten or just a small white cat. 
and um, kind of looked like this. Um, I think it might've had blue eyes instead of green, but just this really cute cat <laughs> that was um, outside of my window. And um, there was also a squirrel and we'll talk about the squirrel in a second, but I'm gonna focus on the cat first. So dual totem this month, mostly cat energy coming through. And um, this one, uh, like I said, it was small white, white fur. Uh, the, the size of it kind of gave me the feeling that it was maybe a newborn or a baby. Like it, 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 it was not like a 16 year old cat. This was something that was younger. Um, I also got the feeling that it was like a stray or a runaway and very much had the energy of the fool, kind of traveling, trying to find itself, trying to figure things out. So uh, the first message that I received is that you're on the precipice of a new journey and you'll land on your feet because that's one of the things that cats do. And this one was kind of scaling the uh, railing outside of my window in the dream and seemed just fine and was ready for a new home, was very open and just kind of wanted to step right through the window. Um, one thing that I'm gonna say though, is because there's this sort of vagabond or fool-like energy, if you're thinking of moving, um, maybe you want to try renting first because I think it was having a hard time figuring out where home was. Um, and if you've just moved, it takes time to sort of put down roots and feel like it's home, especially if you've relocated. So uh, for me, like if I think back in time when I uh, relocated from East Coast to West Coast here in the United States, um, I think it took about a year before I was sure that I made the right decision. Uh, and then I was fine. I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to do. But there was a big, big sort of cultural change, seasonal change, everything was different. So um, give yourself time. It can take six, eight, 12, even like a year and a half, 15, 15 months to really feel like this is where my home is, okay? And it's okay to feel kind of like that fool or vagabond energy in the meantime, because um, that's part of that's part of starting something new. The main thing that I got though is that you are going to land on your feet. Okay, so however chaotic it may feel right now, feels like things are going to get better. Uh, cats, of course, are really divine creatures. They're highly related to the high priestess energy, and um, I'm going to pull a, an image up here in a second of Bastet, which is one of the Egyptian goddesses. Uh, but if you look in Egypt, they were revered, um, and they also help sort of protect, they can see things, they're very spiritually attuned. So one thing that I wrote here is pay attention to the signs and symbols uh, and make sure that you're not missing something, Not and don't wanna second guess yourself for sure. As I said, this was a younger cat or a kitten. So again, it's a new beginning is what I'm getting for you. So stepping into that sort of tiptoeing into the new beginnings right now. And let me show you Bastet. Um, you know, there's a lot of different images of her. Typically she is, um, you're gonna see her with, I'm just gonna use the illustration here on the Wikipedia page. You'll see like a, a female figure, but a cat face. And that's her sort of Egyptian um, cartouche there in the, in the bottom there. But basically if you do a little research on her, she's a domestic uh, symbol, one of fertility, abundance, uh, and really nothing negative associated with that. Protection is actually one of the things that Bastet offers and uh, divine feminine basically. So empress energy combined with the high priestess, really powerful, a very good totem. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was Bastet coming in the form of a cat. Interesting thing for me is one of the first times, wasn't the first angel that I met, but it was um, maybe like the second or third that I kind of met in dream space. It came through as a cat to me first. And it was an angel of, um, of transformation, uh, Zerachiel. Um, there's a couple, like Azriel is one of them, Zerachiel is another one, lesser known one. But it said, you knew me when I was called this, and but it was talking to me through a cat, and then it morphed into like a, a more of a humanoid form. And I, cause I was like, you're not a cat. And it said, no, I'm not. Um, so cats are very divine and they can often be angelic or like a deity or a god or goddess. So um, when I saw the cat, it's auspicious to me. And it was white, pure, kind of, I'll have to look back and make sure that I'm getting this right. But I think that um, like on a computer, if you put all the colors together, I think it's white. It's the reverse in painting. I think it becomes black. But in, when it's um, like RGB and you put everything together, I think it goes to white. So to me, it's the combination of all the, um, all the chakra systems together. So to, to me, when I see that, that's like a bright sun. Um, so I feel like there's this purity, this um, opening and this sort of reset that's opening up to you, Scorpio. And this is exciting. I think it's a really good thing for you. 
Um, let me see here. The next thing that I wanted to talk about, because it's this divine feminine energy, it's all about creation. And the reminder here for you is that you are a creator. Um, we're all connected to the creator, but we're kind of agents of that creation. So it's a perfect time to create birth or release a project or an idea. For some of you, it could also be quite literal where you're going to focus on maybe starting a family. Family, project, new beginning, it's all kind of the same. I see birthing as being the main focus of the next six to eight weeks for you. Um, some of you may just decide also to put increased focus on your personal life. It doesn't have to be family, but if you do have children or if you own a home or if you're trying to fix up your apartment, um, this is also kind of like queen of pentacles or king of pentacles energy where you're focusing on house, home, and understanding that your surroundings there are very important and they kind of um, spiral out into all aspects of your life. So clean up your place. It's a good time. Um, whether it's uh, up Northern Hemisphere and it's spring cleaning or Southern Hemisphere and you're just sort of like getting ready for the winter and clearing everything out in the autumn, doesn't matter. This is a good time to clean out the closets, make some room, make some space for something new. Let's see what's next. Okay, and also like this could also be a little bit of six of pentacles or two of pentacles where you're balancing work-life balance or making a decision like what you wanna focus on. The cat, um, all cats really, they're a little stealthy. I remember my cat Mittens was the name of mine. Um, <laughs> he always kind of, you would get into, you get into trouble. Um, that's just what they do. They don't really care about that. That's part of their nature. Um, this The cat that I saw in the dream, this little white furred one uh, was, wanting to come through, just kind of started stepping through the window. So for me, when I'm thinking of the sneaky nature of it, and there's a couple of things, the squirrel was a little sneaky too. I want you to look at your security overall. This could literally be like just making sure the windows are secure. It could be weatherproofing. Um, I've been talking about like passwords and things like that. Um, all of these things are part of that. So just kind of take a look at overall security and uh, make sure that, that everything is buttoned up a little bit. Uh, and I'll get more into the, the squirrel message in a second. Um, be, wet, be ready for a surprise visit, call, or connection to enter into your life soon. Um, I felt it was charismatic. You couldn't help but love this cat that I saw in the dream. Even Apollo, who is not a big cat fanatic, whenever there's a few here uh, where I live, <clears throat> he either gets really nervous or he wants to, he pretends like he wants to go attack it, but he, he would not farewell in that sort of situation. Um, dogs and cats don't always mix. In my dream though, he was very comfortable with the cat. So what I saw is that there's someone that's coming into your life. They may even kind of sneak in or take, take you by surprise. Very charismatic energy. Get to know them though. Um, the cards may show in a second what kind of connection this could be. It was hard to discern with just a symbol um, or just a spirit totem, but I felt pretty good about this cat. Um, Let's look at the next thing. It did feel like it was a stray when I looked at it, it had a few fleas on it and everything like that. So, uh, you know, my uh, collective, mid-month collective that I did yesterday, uh, one of the things that I was talking about was a diamond in the rough. So there could be either a new person in your life or an opportunity that, that kind of steps in where the person is a little rough around the edges. And it could just be because they've been kind of like um, ping-ponging around a little bit and trying to find their space. Um, so give them a chance. See, get you know, I felt like this cat just needed to get to the vet, needed to sort of be bathed and needed a good meal and it would be fine. It just had been sort of traveling around. My little puppy spent his own time on the um, street. Uh, he was a rescue. And when I first got him, he's very shy. If I make a sudden movement or accidentally drop my keys or something like that, you can see that he's still a little jittery. So um, again, he's a, he was a diamond in the rough and now he's just pure sunshine. So that's why I called him Apollo. All right. Um, let's see what's coming through next. Okay. The next one was the squirrel. And I want to uh, just pull up a picture. I always like a, a good visual aid for these. Uh, for some reason, my guides wanted me to pull up a red squirrel. I would normally do a North American one, but um, I kind of like this one too, because he's got his ears up. Uh, we don't see many of these here in America, but I think it's more in Britain, right? So cute squirrel. Um, with that one, it is about listening too. When I saw the image, I didn't have a time, uh, a moment to write that. Um, so really kind of listen. And what I like about a squirrel is the fast reflexes of it. But let's talk a little bit about what was, <laughs> what was going on that I didn't like with the squirrel. So um, he was digging up bulbs and this wasn't really my place. When I have a dream, I'm just kind of looking at symbols here. But it was like I had this hanging plant outside of the window and um, there were spring bulbs in there. 
And I did some research online. They like certain types of bulbs, not all. I think they like tulips and maybe crocus bulbs, but not everything. Um, so he had dug up the plant and he was in the corner, like making that little chirping sound with the bulb <laughs> in his hand. He didn't make like a big mess, but it was just sort of like something you want to be aware of. Um, so someone in your periphery, because the cat was the main focus and then this little squirrel took the bulb. So what I'm seeing here symbolically is for some of you, there's something going on and there could even be a decoy or distraction and, and you don't want to miss something. So, you know, if you have children, if you have pets, if you have multiple projects that you're doing, it's kind of like if you're a chef, you would have a sous chef, you would, uh, or you would have um, other people on the line kind of helping you out. This is a message not to lose focus, to ask for help if you need it, and to make sure that um, you're not missing someone that's doing something on the side. There's just a little correction that needs to happen to make sure that things don't get out of hand, okay? As I said here, the squirrel made a mess, but I could, I, it was something I knew I could clean up. There was no serious damage. Um, but basically, just want to keep an eye on the little details. So contractually, what this could mean is if you're, you know, if you're signing something and you're not paying attention, or someone's calling you here or whatever, you might miss the fine print. So always have a second set of eyes looking at something, and really look around too. Look around at what you're doing. If it's a project, make sure that you know you haven't forgotten to hammer in a nail or something like that. Just a small detail can make a big difference. Okay. Um, oh, good to know that uh, I guess there's some squirrels here in, in the Southern Rockies that uh, look like that. So thank you for that uh, piece of information. Uh, all right, so here in Southern California, it's mostly just the sort of normal brown squirrels that you see. Okay, um, it's time to make some quicker movement in your life. Uh, I'll, I might post a video on my Instagram later because I saw some squirrels playing the other day. So it's interesting that this came through in a dream, but um, they move pretty fast uh, up and down and all around. And so I think for you, there, there is an advantage to maybe making some things happen and they could happen with much more speed than you expect. Um, and you know, that little guy was resourceful. I don't think he was purposely stealing something from me, right? <laughs> he was just seeing some food and that was his. And he's like, all right, I'm gonna grab this while it's here. So if you're in a place right now where you feel uh, sort of strained on your resources, you're gonna be able to make it work. And I mentioned two cards in tarot that would be associated with that. The two of pentacles is more of a either or. Um, the six of pentacles is I can do it, but it might take more time than I want it to happen. I can't do everything at once. It's basically saying you have everything you need right now, but not everything you want. So you have to budget and plan. So either you'll decide to just stop one thing and start another, or you can kind of stretch out the expectation for how long it's gonna take. But I feel like you're gonna be able to do it. We'll look at your pentacles cards when they come through in the reading and see if that's true. When I woke up, this um, this phrase was planted in my head, and I try to also translate it because not sometimes if English is a second language, these phrases don't make sense. So um, it said, "Be proactive and don't wait for the other shoe to drop." Um, basically, that's meaning like don't if there's something going wrong, or if you have a feeling that that something needs to be fixed, fix it before it becomes a big problem. Um, so you can stop something, you can nip it in the bud um, before it grows into something gigantic. So I feel like you're going to be, this is the same sort of energy of the squirrel, which is why I listed the card right after. I feel like if you stay open, if you stay aware, you're gonna be able to see something, stop it and get back on track. And it's a quick recovery is what I saw, even if there's a little tiny momentary setback that you have. All right, this next one is weird. It occasionally comes through. Uh, I had I did a little research on this too, and I, I don't really think it's a bad thing. Um, I, it, it's, it's not fun when you see certain dream symbols. Um, but this one, I saw teeth <laughs> falling out, but then I saw new ones coming in. So it's sort of like, we forget as an, an adult, we lost all our teeth once, and then we gain them again because of baby teeth. Um, so what I want to look at on this is the regenerative energy of it. And I really think that it's time, when I saw the, the adult teeth coming in, it's sort of like growing up. So the way that I interpreted this dream message was it's time to speak for, for yourself. Speak your mind and speak for yourself. Use your voice and don't let others try to silence you because um, I sort of saw you coming into your own. So getting that adult set of teeth is saying, hey, you're a grown up now. You're ready to speak your mind, um, speak your truth and, um, and don't worry about it so much because that's part of being an adult. You have to sort of just take some risks. I also think you can sink your teeth into something that you truly care about. It's time for growth. I still see the teeth growing. So if there's something that you truly love, like find that direction or get some redirection in your life and commit to it. And that's what I was getting from that particular image, even though it's 
it was weird. Sometimes with my guides, I was like, do I really need to see teeth coming out and growing? But that's what they showed me. Um, this is very specific, but when I get very specific messages, I will also um, uh, I will also kind of highlight that. By the way, this is Scorpio. This is all Scorpio, someone's asking. So you're welcome. The channel messages are all for your sign, so welcome. Um, do more uh, in the digital arena. So this doesn't matter what part of your particular career you're in or what part of your life you're in. This is saying do more digitally. Um, I actually saw streaming as a part of this, but if you're job searching, it's saying get your resume out there, um, make sure that your website looks good. If you're retired, maybe there's ways that you can connect with youth doing uh, telepresence, Zoom, teaching, mentorship type work. Um, but I saw people connecting with you and more digitally. And uh, a lot of times, like for instance, I, I have a relative who's 79 years old and perfectly capable of, of working with iPad, computer, um, Zoom, all of that. So age is not, it's not a block if you have fun with it. Um, so I think that any age can benefit from it, but I saw a lot of growth coming to you and this could be a new job. Maybe you're gonna repackage your skills a little bit and do more remote or digital, but I definitely saw digital playing a big part in the next few months here. Um, the other thing here is with increased visibility, you might feel pressure to acquiesce and do what people want. I want you to stay authentic because we were looking at the teeth and uh, ostensibly also like the throat chakra. This is your time to um, to really be be seen and be heard. And sometimes when we edit ourselves or when we pull back a little bit, then um, what happens is uh, you know we lose our magic, we lose the the special brand that makes us you know us. So I don't want you to lose that special sauce. Keep who you are intact, and as you start to branch out and you know, spread your wings, people will connect with that because it's authentic, because it's you. So if I were just to highlight some main messages here for you, Scorpio, here's what's coming through. With the cat, it's high high intuition, basically. I feel like a lot of you, like me, might be receiving dream messages. You may have more clairsentience that's coming through just this feeling or this knowing that you have to do something. Uh, there's a definite energy with the cat around rebirth. And so this might be a time for you to start fresh and I saw you landing on your feet. Um, it felt like you were between homes or you were between phases of your life. So there's this sort of um, temporarily uh, kind of like vagabond energy that you might be experiencing, but you will eventually plant roots again. So be patient with that. And then don't lose track of what's going on around you because of that little squirrel that was causing trouble. And, uh, <laughs> and then the rest of it is really just about speaking up, being proactive, speaking up, and trying some things that are outside of your comfort zone. I mentioned digital, but if you're already doing that, maybe it's it's something else. I just think pushing yourself a bit, making sure that your digital presence is good, like Google yourself, make sure that what comes up is what you like. Do a little research in that because I saw the digital um, part of your life being important and people looking at it. Nowadays, we're at a point where everyone's gonna Google you. So you should Google yourself. And um, you, know, you can take down a lot of stuff too if you don't like it, especially, all those places that list your your address and all that stuff, you can get rid of that. So Google yourself, opt out, get, get increased privacy because that was one of the things that we were talking about and uh, you'll be glad that you did it, all right? So we're gonna look at the cards now. Again, this, this can be used for sun, rising, and moon. I saw a question um, also for your um, Venus or any other aspect of your chart that you connect with. And um, if you're not a Scorpio, it doesn't matter. You're still gonna get messages. So just enjoy this. Uh, enjoy this reading and see what comes through for you. Because I am uh, clairvoyant, so I'm going to get other messages for anybody that's present, so.
All right, let's take a look at your messages this month, Scorpio. And um, like I said earlier, this can also be like six to eight weeks. So even though I'm reading it right now here in um, April, it's for May, and it can be for a couple of months depending on when you view it. So feel free to watch it again in the month that I'm reading for because a lot of times some of these messages can be even stronger then. Uh, I, like I was saying, proactivity is really a key piece of my uh, readings, free will. So that's why we show up a little bit earlier. So we have the divine feminine energy here that I talked about with Bastet. Um, and it's the maiden here. And um, it's kind of hard to see what's at the center here, but <laughs> I just see a kind of hand here. But with this, this would be like the Empress card. So fertility, abundance, growth, and also this ability to um, create in your life. So we get a nice nod to the channeled messages here with this. And, you know, the color here that we see pink is a really great color to use in meditation um, when you're working with people that are challenging because it's got this really soft energy. It puts a loving, peaceful light around them, even though green is the color of the heart. Um, you know, pink is a really great energy for diffusing, for creating a sense of calm. And it, it really works with um, sometimes with negative people. So uh, doesn't show up very well here, um, but rose quartz is something that you can use um, and keep you know, if you have a small polished one, you can keep it in your pocket. You could wear something around your throat chakra if you want to kind of push out a little bit of energy of love with what you're saying. Uh, anywhere you want, you can use this. It's a really nice um, sort of crystal that everyone would benefit from. Uh, and just rose in general. Uh, what I mentioned before, you can use like, I think it's rose hips. Uh, there's tea and I think there's jam that you can also buy. Um, sometimes consuming rose is really good because it will also bring this sort of love, love into your life and this sort of heart-centric energy as well. So feel free to put um, edible rose kind of products into your life. There's rose water that you can use to, to bless things as well. So um, I'm looking at the rose just as powerfully as I am the maiden because I feel like this is gonna help you with your ability to be creative, to, um, to also kind of have this peaceful energy as you're creating new things, okay? We'll go to the center card now and see what's kind of at the heart of the matter this month. And we have accountability, honesty, and this is the squirrel. <laughs> the seven of swords is the squirrel. So if you're having any sort of issues with this, then I would say what you really want to be focusing on is um, looking at just being as honest as you can with yourself. Uh, I say this a lot, and I hope that people kind of um, figure this out with the Seven of Swords. Sometimes we get ourselves into trouble, and the Seven of Swords is a lie that we will tell to ourselves. So it can be if somebody is asking you to stay late every day this week, and you just know that you're not feeling well, or you've made previous engagements, or, um, or there's something about it where you know you're going to fall short of the promise. If you can't do it, don't promise to do it. If, you're gonna, if you say, yeah, I'll meet you next week, for, for lunch or dinner, and you know you're probably gonna have to do something else, don't do it. Just speak up and say, you know, it's really, we should try to do it like next month. This month is crazy for me. Always better to say the truth or to say, no, I'm really tired. I need a day off. I need some time off. Um, and whatever it is that's coming through where someone's expecting too much, they're kind of just taking as much as you'll give. So the way to counteract, and I always like to look at tricky cards this way, is to just say, no, you've got enough. I need to sort of reserve a little bit right now, okay? Um, Seven of Swords can also be the squirrel that's taking something in the sidelines. So if there's somebody that's trying to do too, too much or too little or is getting away with something that they shouldn't, this is about you know redirecting your attention to that for a moment and saying, no, that doesn't work with me. Um, so a simple no, and then also being accountable, and then also not being afraid to say no to things that are just unreasonable, all of these things will help. Uh, you can always overcome the seven of swords. It's really just about honest, transparent communication, keeping an eye on things and being honest with yourself ultimately. Okay. Um, it does feel like someone's trying to take a little bit more than they should based on this particular illustration. It's not as sneaky as it is greedy. Um, some of the seven of swords, you see someone sneaking in the night, but this one is just someone that is, you know, just taking, and they may not be thinking about it. So you can bring their attention to it. It's also crossed by the justice card. Um, and this is really indicative of like, it's time to do something right. So um, bringing balance into your life, bringing balance into the situation, and maybe um, bringing this to the light of day. So for some of you, you're going to say, not only is that wrong, but I'm going to maybe take someone to court and get what you took back or whatever. So it's all of that. Um, 
I like justice though, because it also has other aspects. It can be making a decision. Don't second guess yourself. If you know what you wanna do, and I feel like you do, this is, it's crossing it. So it's not reverse, it's not upright. It's just a message for you. This is saying, do what is balanced right and feels right for you. Um, because if you trust those instincts, they're going to lead you to the right situation. Now, if there's someone in your life that has this sort of tricky energy of the seven of swords, this is about breaking free from that. Um, justice, because it's not in any position, can also have the reverse state of it, which would be like, no more, or I'm done with this, and you're gonna cut ties. So for some of you, there is a breaking off or a breaking up or um, a moving on from someone, okay? And that's not necessarily, I actually think it's beneficial. I'm not gonna say it's not necessarily bad. It's, it's absolutely good based on what we're seeing here. So if you're doing something to be happier, healthier, and it feels more honest, go for it, okay? Let's take a look at your deep past. For some of you, you're dealing with this now if you're watching it live. We have the four of pentacles in reverse. So one of the key um, opportunities that you have right now is this chance to increase your self-confidence and self-worth. Um, the four of coins can see as a foundational, you can, you can view it as like pillars or foundational energy, but oftentimes it is a constricting energy. Traditional Rider Waite Smith deck would show someone kind of holding something tight, that coin or that energy really tight to their heart. And they're afraid of, is this all I'm going to get? Will I be able to, to do more? Sometimes there's also this um, doubt in their mind, like, okay, so something fantastic just happened. Am I deserving of it? And that's what I want to hit on here. Justice, just like judgment, it can be sort of this feeling of, am I deserving of, I can't believe this happened. Well, if you can't believe it, and if you don't feel it, then how am I going to feel it and support it? And how are you going to have more of this happen in your life? So I want you to work on feeling worthy, deserving, ready, and enthusiastic about these new changes that are happening for you. Because guess what? You called all of them into being, and you earned them. And I'm excited for you. And I think as, as you start to focus on what you want to do with it instead of should it happen, that's when the power steps in for you. So let's look at the Four of Pentacles as being foundational. Let's open up your heart to seeing that, yes, you deserve this and more. And if you're not getting enough, if you're selling yourself short, which can sometimes happen with four and five of pentacles in the past, this is about asking for more, getting those um, fresh set of adult teeth coming in and saying, all right, I'm going to say what I need to say now because this is me, this is my life. If I can't do it, who else is gonna do it for me, right? We have the five of wands here in the recent past, definitely a message for all of you tuning in right now. Um, don't get lost in the shuffle. I, I think that sometimes we look at this, you, you just see a bunch of shadows here and everybody's just kind of working. I think that what's happened, so what happens sometimes is we just get into patterns or habits and we forget like, why, why did this start? Does this feel good to me? Does it, is it still something that I want? Um, it could be a relationship that you've been in for like five or 10 years. It could be a job that you've been in for even longer. Um, it could be a house because I saw that you needed to maybe be moving there has to be a shift and there has to be some growth. So if you're gonna stay with that thing, whatever it is, whether it's a person, place, or thing, then what you have to start to see is movement, growth, and a sense of fulfillment. It looks like for some of you, it's not enough. It's not quite enough to, to sus sustain what you're looking for. So if it's not enough, if it's not substantial enough, then it's time to speak up and it's time to find a way to advocate. Literally, literally we have someone here advocating for you and saying, I need more balance in my life, right? Okay, and then we have the Page of Swords being very to the point because he's reversed. Um, so Page of Swords reversed is saying, I know what I need to, to do. I know what's right and wrong. I need to just kind of like spit this out and say it so you can do it. The Page is the most gentle of the Swords card if we were going to see a reverse one. So this isn't something that's going to hurt people's feelings. It's just bringing something up. Back in school, it would be the equivalent of raising your hand. Like it's, I need to be heard. I have a question. So don't be afraid to raise your hand this month. Don't be afraid to even interject and say, before we move on, I actually, I, I have a question about that. I don't feel comfortable with this. Can, can I get some clarification? Because I don't feel like we're on the same page. That's all a page is doing. He's interrupting the feedback to make sure that he understands what the other person's saying and that they understand what he's trying to say. Um, so you as the page have to focus on listening and on also on being heard. So if the other person isn't actively listening, stop the, the feedback for a second and say, wait, this is what's going on. Um, I need to make sure that we're, we're, uh, we're actually communicating here. You're not just talking at me or I'm not just talking at you. So 
Um, that's the main thing there is to speak up, to listen, and to make sure that both sides are getting equal time and are being respected here. We have the moon card in reverse. So um, this is your intuition coming through. And we don't actually, do we see, you know, they're very, very faint. You can see the, there's a little dog, there's a little wolf here. I was like, where's the animals? Uh, where are the animals? So um, with this card, it's always about something coming to light because the moon is a reflective sort of energy. It doesn't have its own light, it's reflecting the sun. A lot of times what we see in dreams and uh, maybe even in our own sort of projections in our heads, it's, it is sometimes just, um, it's warped a little bit. So the moon's coming through to help you look at something more clearly and say, some of these things are illusions, some are fear. Go deeper, get to, get to the root of the problem or the root of the emotion, and you're going to be able to get past this. Um, we are looking again at misbehaving with some people. So this could be a coworker, it could be a friend, it could be someone closer to you. So if somebody in your life is simply trying to get away with something, um, it's all going to come to light this month. If you're trying to get away with something, it will also come to light. So be authentic, be honest, and don't try to get away with things. <laughs> That's how you're going to keep yourself out of trouble. This is also you. It's a powerful card. It's representing Scorpio here. The scorpion would be coming out of this water usually. Um, so be yourself. So if I were to see the high priestess reverse, it would just basically say, uh, be saying like, listen to what's coming through. And this one kind of as a representative of you is saying, don't be less than yourself. Don't try to mute your light for anyone else. Um, don't be afraid to do what's necessary, okay? But creative energy is with that. Divine feminine energy is a part of that. And I feel like you've got some really great things that you can pull from that. If you're creative, and even if you're very practical, I feel like you're gonna get these little moments of clarity or epiphanies that will be coming through where all of a sudden you can connect all the dots and think, oh, that's what I need to do. That's why this happened. And so the sort of tapestry of everything is starting to really melt together in a nice way for you this month. We have the 10 of cups. So for those of you that are looking for relationships, this is right there in the soul space saying, yeah, I'm ready, I've done the work. If I see an ace card um, or a 10 of cups in a love reading, it's really good. It shows me that you're capable of giving and receiving. And this is a very serious energy too. So the ace of cups is just saying, I'm, I'm capable of unconditional love. But the 10 of cups is saying, I'm ready to share that love with someone else. I'm ready to do something for the community, for the planet. It's, a, it's, it's more than just the cup flowing over. It's the cup connecting to other people. So there's a bigger purpose for you this month. As you look at your sort of, this, this can indicate like your step in life, wherever you're at. Um, are you getting to that place where you can do more? Uh, because you look at some, some people who have been really famous or made a lot of money, the ones that actually give back, the, philanth the, the philanthropists basically, um, it's something I think that we could all learn from because we can't take it all with us. We take with us the love, we take with us the lessons, um, the memories, all of those things are currencies. Memories is something recently that my guides reminded me, yeah, you take that too. So we take all those things with us, but the physical stuff we don't. So one of the things that the Ten of Cups is reminding you is, how are you helping your extended family, children, and future generations um, after you leave this planet? What's your indelible mark, your thumbprint that you're leaving? And when I coach clients one-on-one, -on -one, this is gonna help you in everything. So it's, we're gonna take a quick pause here. Um, I want you to think of writing on um, you know, a little piece of paper like this, what it is you're trying to do, not what your job is, not what your mom or dad wanted you to do, not what your spouse or friends expect you to do. Um, you can do a few of these and figure out how they fall together because I have like multiple ones that kind of, but like if I were to sum up everything, I would say I'm here to raise collective consciousness. That's my planetary goal. I also like to destigmatize conversations about um, metaphysics. I like to demystify it and I like to empower so all of those things are in my sort of wheelhouse of soul things, like soul goals, if you will. What are your higher callings? What are you trying to do? Because if your job isn't matching with that, because if your relationship isn't supporting it, because if your um, friend circle doesn't understand it, then it's time to start to reevaluate each and every one of those things so that they can get in check with that. Because they don't all have to be that, but they should be supporting that and get, getting you on that stairway to heaven, if you will, here, getting you closer to what you're trying to do before you leave the planet. So take a moment and think, where am I? It's a very different read of this, uh, the 10 of cups, but this is a very different illustration. So this is about feeling joy and passion because of the soul path, not because of 
hot passionate love with someone else. It's, it's actually the indelible mark that you're leaving on this planet and the people that you touch in the heart space um, before you leave, all those connections in a positive level. So think about that. But yes, can you have an amazing relationship come through this month? Absolutely. Ten of Cups would indicate that there's a possibility to have something serious like um, marriage or uh, something where you're going to possibly move in together because I saw that vagabond energy. But test it out. Test the water out before you sign on the dotted line. It feels like you want to do a little practice run there. That's why the cat came through. Cat's very independent. It takes a little bit of time before it's ready to bond with a dog or another cat. So it um, feels like that's necessary for a connection with new love in your life. For existing love with the Ten of Cups, it's really celebrating the life you've built together. And sometimes you lose track of that because of the annoyances that pop up after years and years of being together. So look at what you've built and celebrate that construction that you have together. And as a single person, then you're looking at, again, it doesn't matter who's with you. It's kind of, again, all the lives, all the hearts that you touch in your day-to-day your -day life. No matter what, we're all connected and we're all climbing that uh, ladder together. So that's the, the message here, okay? Really beautiful card, really beautiful messages. Um, don't lose sight of what you're trying to do. This exact card came through in yesterday's collective reading. Um, with the card in reverse, the Two of Wands is saying, first of all, this Two of Wands is trying to do too much at once. Um, you know, I would prefer the typical one where the wands are kind of planted and the person could just sort of focus on manifestation. So normally this would be the two of wands. I would be looking at a crystal or looking at the globe and saying, this is what I see. The wands around me are, are representing growth and pillars of movement. Um, so I would say, don't try to do it all. Don't try to do it all at once and don't lose track of what your, uh, what your goal is here. I'm looking at this and it's too kind of too much at once. Um, so I think set aside time for meditation, don't lose track of your vision. And if you've gotten so involved in like work or some other project that you, you lost you, this is about hitting the reset to find yourself. And there could be a sort of loss of self within a relationship, a family or a company where it's just sort of like, where's my identity? This is about finding your identity and finding your purpose, which is what I was just kind of harping on a moment ago, because if you know you and if you know what you're trying to do, you're going to call people into your life that also see that, celebrate it and empower it. If you don't know who you are, you're going to get people that test you like the squirrel <laughs> that I saw in my dream. And it's sort of there in the background chattering and trying to get away with things. And when you set a, a sort of firm thing like, no, that's not happening to me. That's not happening now. Stop it. And then you're not going to uh, attract that energy anymore. So really know who you are, really know what you're trying to do. And don't be afraid to just because we have the page of swords here reversed. Don't be afraid to say what you need to say to people to, to kind of let them know how to show up. Like, I need you to do this, or it makes me happy when you do this, or I'm sad or frustrated when you show up this way for me. It's very therapy-like, but you'll find a way to kind of bring it into everyday speech. And I think that's gonna be important, okay? But ultimately, this is good for manifestation. First step, you need this. If you have this without the high priestess, the high priestess isn't as strong. They're very, um, complementary energies. So I always see two of wands and high priestess like right there um, side by side on the scales. Okay, so I feel like when we have a little bit of the high priestess here in this, it's divine feminine, but we need you to trust yourself a little bit more. And I think things are going to start to really kind of um, punch through and you're going to see some movement and growth. Scorpio, it feels like you're impatient right now. We have um, temperance card reverses. I'm looking at hopes, fears and opportunities. Um, this is a cool temperance card. Um, it's not just it's not just a cup that he's holding. It's kind of like this. It's it's a crystalline box. It's very cool. Uh, so for you, it feels like you almost want something to come together faster than it can or should or needs to come together. Uh, one thing that I think is important is not to force. So normally, seven of wands would be pushy, but seven of swords can also be pushing someone to do something that they don't want to do. There's a pushiness with both of the sevens here. Um, so the seven of wands leads to the seven of swords. So if you push something before it should happen, then you could end up with people or expectations that fall short um, of what you would hope they could be. So be patient. And if someone isn't ready, find someone that is. And trust, I, this is something I talked about in the collective as well. Trust and know if you get a no. Um, it's not only is it the right thing to do, but how can you ever expect others to respect your limits if you don't do the same? So 
Just if someone's not ready, if they're not willing, if they're not capable, let them go. And that's part of justice too, is just releasing things if they need to be, okay? We have the star card. What a great card to be in the outcome. It's reverse, but doesn't matter to me. This is one of the most auspicious cards to be in the outcome. Um, with, with it in reverse, what it's showing me is that for many of you, there's a desire to please, which is something that I hit on in the last couple of note cards that I wrote with the uh, channel messages. So, um, you know, all eyes may be on you, but this is actually the time when you want to surprise them. Take them by surprise, be yourself, do the unexpected, because a star shines and a, a star is, is um, remem memorable. And we're talking more like if we think of uh, a physical embodiment here, like a person, a celebrity, or someone that's doing something. If you say you're a star because someone's a, an amazing person, it's more of a British phase, but it's because someone is standing out. So even a star in the sky, it's shining, it's coming out of the darkness, we see it. So you're supposed to be seen, to be bold, to be amazing. And if you're not, you're, you're cheating yourself and you're cheating others around you. Mostly on a soul level though, you don't wanna hold back when this is coming through. Everything that we saw this month, every single card is leading you to the star. So I see it as a breakout period for you. Um, the only things holding you back, the key things at the center are uh, you being authentic, you being honest, and you feeling like you deserve all that's coming through. Then just listening to yourself and speaking up for yourself. Um, those are the main kind of challenges because everything uh, around it other than that is actually very, very positive. This tells me you've actually put in the work and this says just don't lose track of the work that you've done and feel that you're deserving of it. And if you do that, then I feel like you're gonna be okay. Let's expand your forecast now. We're gonna look at health, wealth, love and destiny and I'll recontextualize what we looked at through those lenses. Um, we're gonna start with your health card and I read this first as an energetic card and then I look at the uh, tarot cards for additional body messages. Um, standard disclaimers apply. I'm not a doctor, but I'm looking at things that can make you feel something or can kind of move you energetically. All right, so we have Krishna here saying, find a blessing in your current situation. Um, so no matter what's going on, also something that I discussed yesterday, so this is very close to my um, mid-month mid check-in, so it makes sense that this is coming through. Um, so everything is for a purpose, and um, sometimes... We, we see like a rejection or delay. And for you, I think it's more of a delay because temperance reverses just impatience. So if something's a little slower than you want, it's probably so you can be aligned to a divine timing that will be more receptive to the release, to the visibility of whatever it is you're trying to put out there. It could also mean that, let's say if it was like an engagement, if, if, if we do put it into the, the lens of a relationship, you can't force someone to be ready if you do they may not in the long run want to stick it through in this relationship because they felt rushed, cheated, or uncertain. Like, did I do the right thing? What if, what if I let them really feel solid? Same thing for contracts, same thing for major decisions in your life, which is one of the reasons that I thought for moving, you should take your time before, like if you're going to buy a house or sign a long-term lease, you need, you need a chance to sort of just test it out first. Um, if something didn't work the way you wanted it to, it's the universe gently nudging you on a better path. It doesn't feel good necessarily when you go through it, but it'll feel a heck of a lot better than that alternate reality that you just um, avoided. So you're being blessed, you're being guided. It may not be what you wanted, but it's what you needed is what this card is saying. It's for your well-being. Let me now take a look at this as additional messages here coming through for health. So if you're trying to make a change happen, stop uh, a habit like drinking or smoking, if you're trying to um, do a new sort of exercise routine, just trying to make a change in your life. Do it when you're ready, because this shows me that there's still a little bit of, eh, I don't know, maybe, did, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. I want you to really feel like you're ready to do it, because until you're ready, it's not going to stick. It's like throwing pasta on the wall and just watching it slide down. Um, you're not at that sort of sticky phase where everything's going to be okay. So um, get to there, get to the point where you're like, yes, I, I want to do this because I don't like the alternative anymore. I know it's going to be tough, but I'm going to push through for this amount of time. And I'm going to have someone in my life maybe to keep it real, to, to keep me accountable, right? Um, other messages with health. If there's something going on and you need, you don't feel good about it, um, speak up, ask a question to a doctor, to a professional, always. This is just saying it. Even if you feel judged about it, doesn't matter. Better to get that question out there and get the answer. It's probably not as bad as you think. 
We have the star card and the outcome. And anything that you're going through is probably going to help you improve your life right now. So just speak up and get the necessary knowledge. Um, that, that honesty piece is important here. It feels like if you can't, also if you fall off the, what is that phrase? If you fall off the wagon on whatever it is that you're doing, um, just get back on, that's all. And get back on and commit to it, stay balanced. We all, have, we all make mistakes. So you can either choose to keep falling or dust yourself off, get back on there and start again, start fresh. Like a, like a cat, you have nine lives. I don't know which incarnation this little kitten was on when I saw it, but it feels like you are gonna land on your feet. So if you fell down, don't worry, get started again. That's the main message here for health. You can manage this. Be patient with yourself. Um, be patient with others as well. Let's take a look at wealth. Wealth is not just for those of you that are working. It can be um, how you're managing your money and how you're managing your resources if you're retired or if you're a student. All right, so we have the soulmate card here and it was reversed. So it feels like your, uh, your path is being pulled by others in your life right now. So for some of you, this could equate a move because you're married, because your partner got a job. This could mean a decision to go to a school because you have a crush on someone and you wanna be in the same school as them. This could be a decision if you're retired to move closer to a child because you wanna be with them. Your, your energy is focused on someone that you love or something that you care about. The soulmate card is an attractive sort of energy. So, um, so that's okay. I feel like you just wanna look at the, the trade-offs if you're doing something. Are you getting something back from this exchange? Because um, this is in money, it's not in love. Uh, so as a sort of aspect of you, I wanna make sure that the balance remains. Sacrifice is a necessary component to relationships, give and take. Just make sure that there's give associated with this if that's what's gonna go on. And that you're, you're safe and you're supported. Because otherwise the other person might have to make some concessions as well. So figure out how this works for both of you and make sure that you're you're not just running after someone or they're not just pulling you along. It has to be both of you together feeling that, right? Um, the soulmate card can also mean that there's an inconvenient relationship that pops up uh, in, in a place where you would normally be working. So for some of you, this could mean that, um, you know, if you're retired, it could be a volunteering situation. If you're a student, it could be at school and otherwise it's a work situation. Take a look and see how is this gonna change the dynamics of the work situation? Does it make sense? Um, you know, <laughs> sometimes you meet who you're supposed to meet at an inconvenient time. Um, not a bad card for those of you looking for love or really good friend because soulmates, Apollo, he's, he's in the other room right now, but he's my soulmate. So it can be a pet, it can be a parent, um, it can be a best friend and it can be a lover. So it feels like you're meeting someone or, or you're kind of connecting with someone who you have a deep connect, you have this sort of deep soul relationship with. It could be romantic. Um, if it is romantic, how does that affect the dynamics of what you're doing? And, um, and if it isn't romantic, you just have a really good friend coming into your life and that's a great thing to celebrate. So um, it's going to be environmental for finding the new friend, probably something where you're doing something that you love or you're focusing on something else and that person shares a passion. That's the best way to meet someone. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that that's stands the test of time that sticks is if we're kind of looking at that sticky energy, right? Um, so let's take a look now at um, some of the messages here in the cards here for wealth. You know, um, we didn't we didn't get pentacles, did we? <laughs> we got the four of pentacles. That's not enough. So um, one other message here. I mentioned earlier that uh, this is deep past. So this is an old pattern. For those of you that run a business or maybe freelance or even just generally speaking when it comes to wages and exchange. I want you to focus on a more even exchange. The four of pentacles is too generous. So it feels like sometimes you give way more and go way above and you're getting not enough back. So it's time for recognition. It's time for something that's fair, more fair. It doesn't have to be a ridiculous amount more, but when you set up this sort of inequality of exchange of, of energy. All money is, is is someone else's energy that they're giving to you. So basically make sure that that exchange of energy is even. If you're giving too much or if you're taking too much, something's amiss. So if it's your employer and they're not doing enough to give back to you, fight for yourself, advocate, and then move on if you need to, because we have the justice card. If it's a relationship and you're always the one that's holding down the fort, the other person has to do the same. Um, and any aspect of your life, it's basically just fighting for equality. And I would say more than that, I want you to go to the Six of Pentacles. 
um, from the four because six is more than enough. It's not even rich. It's just saying I have what I need and then I have a little bit extra and I can still do what I want, but maybe not in the timing that I want. So at least aim for the six of pentacles if you can. So equal or greater than what you, you know, what the other people are doing, you should feel comfortable with that because you've earned that. I feel like you've worked really hard to get where you're at. Okay. So fight for equity and um, don't feel bad. This is the star card as well. So sometimes we're afraid to outshine someone, a best friend, a partner, a family member, someone at work. If you did what you're supposed to do and it's your time to shine, it's your time to shine. It's okay. All right. You earned it. And if they can't celebrate that, that's something that they have to deal with. There's some sort of a, um, a security issue there as well, self-security sort of thing, um, insecurity, I should say. All right, so those are the messages here. It looks pretty good, actually. I feel like you're gonna have a stand-up sort of moment here where something will emerge and it's, I just really want you to go through that portal when it comes, okay? Let's take a look at uh, your love messages here. And it says dreams coming true. And we have this big sort of galactic energy coming uh, as well. We have the soulmate card right underneath it. That's very nice. And we also have the 10 of cups here when I was looking at the ego. These are great cards for love. I'm not someone who unnecessarily looks at love or baits people because of it. If I see it, I say it and I'm seeing it. And so I'm saying it. Um, one of the things with this dream come true card is you have to hold the vision. You have to stay realistic and you have to be patient. The temperance card, like it or not, is about patience. So the picky you, uh, the pickier you are about someone that you want in your life, the longer it might take for that to happen because you have really high standards. Um, the truth is, you know, if you just want company, you could probably just walk outside and start talking to a random person, and you've you've accomplished that. If you're looking for companionship, trust, loyalty, um, that sort of deep, deep connection, it's going to take a little bit more discernment. So it feels like many of you are being more discerning and this is saying good for you, don't give up, all right? Um, the other thing is you might be celebrating and working on a dream or a goal with someone that you love and that person should be able to celebrate that and see the bigger possibility here, see the, see the sort of galactic opportunity that you're trying to embrace. So um, that partnership that I mentioned here, this could be a really good coworker, a really good best friend with whom you, you share a passion and you work on something with. So. Um, there could be a really nice symbiotic work friendship that happens here. So that's that's awesome. If you can be best friends with someone that you either work with or own a business with, I couldn't think of a better thing uh, to put together there. The only thing that I want you to look at when we're looking at relationships, um, signing a marriage contract or signing a business contract, they're both contracts, by the way, um, is, is it fair? Look at a prenuptial if you're going to get married. Make sure that, the, that um, you both know what you're going to get in the marriage, and if you decided to exit it, you should you should definitely talk about that. Um, be honest and have everything set out. But these are good cards, so I feel like you're headed in the right direction with friendships, with love, with work in general. Um, again, this could be a time to to step into something new. Just don't go head first. Really keep your head on straight here and have the difficult conversations. And I think things are gonna go really well with that. And you might be meeting someone that you really have this deep, deep connection with. It does not have to be a lover. It can just be someone that you feel like it's, it's you've been calling them in for a while. And that's what I see with the uh, dreams come true, okay? Good messages here, actually. Um, if you're single and looking, the biggest thing is it feels like someone may not be out of a relationship. So for those of you that are trying to date someone, if you meet them and they are recently divorced or trying to get out of a relationship, make sure that they've signed on the dotted line. Make sure that they're being fair with you and being honest with you. Um, I didn't uh, like the star card here tells me this would be a deep connection. Just the timing. Don't rush it. The timing has to be right. Um, Page of Swords, little immature, actually. Um, so I would say you might have more experience or um, there might be something going on with age or experience that's off. So just make sure that you're okay with that. That's the only thing that I'm picking up on. Existing relationships, all about communication, um, all about talking about the things that excite and scare you at the same time. Um, and then also for those of you that are single and happy, I feel like you can make a big impact on the world right now. You can start to really connect with other people. Uh, so whether it's virtually or if it's safe to get out and connect with people, that's this is a good time for that. All right, let's look at your trajectory card, which I call destiny. We have um, Vulcan uh, and the card was reversed. So this is basically about, we see him sort of here. At, it's like Hephaestus, I think, is the, um, the equivalent, the Greek Roman equivalent here. So 
this is the builder card, but it's forging, it's reforging, right? He was the Smith for all the gods, I believe. So what are you doing right now to reforge, to rebuild, to recreate something? Um, and this is saying that you might need to do that. So if something was broken, if something was messed up, take those requisite pieces together and just mold them into something new. It's all about not repeating history. I think I, I'm trying to think which, vid, which video that was for. I think it might have been Libra. But, I, but why do something again? This is your chance to like write a new script. So Vulcan is coming through and saying, hey, whether it's a hammer or a pen, you get to write a new story. You, you get to make a new path. You get to forge something new. As long as you're reforging, moving forward, you're fine. If you're trying to repeat, probably not going to work here. Um, fiery energy, so a lot of passion with Vulcan. Um, and I think that that can be exciting as long as you have a channel, as long as you have an outlet to put all of that into. All right, we're going to quickly review, and then we're going to go into the next portion of the reading where I will dig deeper into some of the questions. I definitely want to look at like Seven of Swords and Justice. So I'll look at that and see what's coming up with accountability and separation. Um, I want to look at like, these these relationships that are coming through and get a little bit more clarity on that and then we'll do a wild card after that and after the meditation i'll pull a card that you have and a question that you have for me all right so let me turn the camera down really quickly uh, i'll get additional messages so even if you did join at the beginning stick around there'll be more that, that comes through with this and then we're going to get into the next part so the animal totems that came through today were cat and squirrel cat is the main one that i was focusing on for most of the reading um i saw this um, beautiful little white cat that looked more like a kitten to me. Pure white fur, and I think it had blue eyes. Um, it was a stray and a runaway, and it kind of gave me the energy of the fool card. So movement, change, getting your footing. But what I got is that you're going to land on your feet. This is the main message here. So um, you're on the precipice of change, but uh, you might have this sort of uncertainty. For some of you, um, you also have a little bit of impatience here, as we saw with temperance reverse and how quickly things are happening or not happening. Um, if you're uh, thinking of moving or relocating, just really make sure that the space that you're going to feels right. I get I get the feel that it might make sense to stay with family or to rent or have something temporary for a little bit because that cat was just checking things out with me. So I feel like for many of you, this is a chance to really just get your footing. Um, I definitely see high priestess energy attached to the cat symbology. And I also see that you wanna just listen to signs and symbols that you're getting. The seven of swords can be sometimes trying to sweep those under the rug, even when you see a red flag. Pay attention to any messages you receive. Um, rebirth energy, and that's what we saw with Vulcan here, um, being able to reforge to do something um, brand new. And I talked about Bastet, which is an Egyptian goddess one that is a divine feminine symbol of creation, also of house, home, children, and birth. Um, so if you're trying to start something new, you're protected, you're supported, you're in the right space at the right time. There may be increased focus on personal life too, whether it's home, family, children, um, whatever. It feels like you're just supposed to be doing that. She also oversees health, Bastet, so you might be focusing a little bit more on um, fixing some things that aren't the way you want them to be in your personal health. Um, the stealthy energy of cats is something that you wanna be aware of. So tighten up security, uh, literally in like your house, like locks and, and windows, but it can also be passwords and who you're sharing things, uh, secrets with. <laughs> because the moon card reverse is someone that may not be able to keep that secret, so be careful. Um, be ready for a surprise visit. Maybe it's a landlord, maybe it's your mom, maybe it could be a really good surprise where you're just meeting someone out of the blue, like the star card or the soulmate card. Um, but be prepared for the unprepared this or the unexpected this month, I would say. Um, think on your feet like a cat is going to have to do. You're going to have to trust your instincts this month. The squirrel there was up to no good in, in, the, uh, in the dream that I had. So in your periphery, on the sidelines, just pay attention to stuff. Don't lose track of something that you need to do. Even something as small as paying the bills or, you know, just doing something minuscule. I don't want you to forget something important and then have that catch up with you. Um, the mess that it made was something manageable. So the sooner you take care of it, the better. And that's actually coming a card or two for now. Um, but first thing I want to talk about here is that life moves fast and it, so does the squirrel. And it feels like you have to make some rapid movements in your life this, this month. It's um, resourcefulness is going to be able to help you through that. Um, be proactive. Don't wait for a problem to get bigger. Um, my guide said, don't wait for the other shoe to drop, but to kind of take that phrase out, it's really just saying, if you see a red flag or a problem, fix it before it grows. Um, your teeth <laughs> were coming through and I saw like baby teeth falling out and adult teeth coming in and it's time to speak up, to speak for yourself. 
uh, not to let anyone put words in your mouth. Definitely, you have the ownership and the uh, the authentic voice that you need to have right now. So, um, so go for it. Sink your teeth into something. You should be enjoying things and and really looking forward to doing what you're doing. And if you don't, this is a sort of reality check to make sure that you feel joy and passion about something. Digital presence is important. Google yourself, see what's coming up for you. Make sure that that looks good. Take a look at your website. Take a look at your social media. People look at this nowadays. So whether it's an employer or a love interest or a new friend, you want to make sure that this looks good. All right. Um, and then finally, um, if there's a lot of eyes on you and there probably will be because we've got the star card, do what's right, not what's popular. They're not always the same thing. They don't have to be exclusive, but they also don't have to be inclusive. So Follow your heart, be authentic to, do, to yourself and don't lose your voice. We have this abundancy uh, and this sort of like fertility that's coming through here with the, uh, the maiden card or the high priestess or Bastet, which we just talked about. So uh, embrace that. Use rose in your diet and also rose colored quartz if you have it to kind of help out with um, balancing energies this month. It's gonna be really helpful with that as well. Center card, being honest with yourself, making sure others are being honest with you, um, not avoiding things that pop up and, and just hoping that they'll go away. Sometimes it's scary to look at it as the moon says, but the justice card is touching all of this and saying, if you work on it, if you're honest, and if you face that fear, balance will happen. You deserve more than you have. I feel like this whole month is getting you towards this energy of shining. So uh, don't be afraid to ask for more. In fact, it feels like that's the that's the next step for you. It's important to kind of advocate for more uh, work. It's not always fun, but it feels like you're on the right path. So keep working hard, speak up for yourself. Um, make sure that in communication you're being heard. And so is the other person. Listening is a necessary component. Again, otherwise you're just talking at someone or they're talking at you. Uh, I, I see this as a divine uh, creative card here, the moon. It's also you step out, come out of the water, step into the light. That's what we see here. So I really want you to shine. We want you to become not just the moon, but the star. Really show all of your colors because this is you. Just this is just you at like half light. I want you to be at full light here, um, like the dimmer switch going all the way to the top. Ten of Cups. Yes, love is possible this month. More importantly, you have a chance to really bring uh, something to the planet, to touch other people, to to inspire them this month. So this is a, an inspiration card as much as it is love and relationships. Don't lose track of yourself, no matter where you're at. Um, as long as you know who you are and what you want and why you're doing it, everything falls into place. Patience is key. And the ultimate outcome here is the star card, which I love. All right. No matter what setback you might be experiencing or whatever challenge or blessing, it's for the right time and for the right reason. Um, basically find blessings in your current situation. So if everything's good, just give gratitude. If things are tricky, figure out like maybe what you could do to improve and realize it possibly could have been worse. Um, Krishna is coming through to enlighten and to redirect you. Um, the soulmate, uh, and actually uh, the other message with health here, I would say is to speak up if something is scaring you, like really be honest with yourself, with others. And a um, little bit of um, restraint could, could be necessary here with the 10 of cups as well, not going overboard. With, uh, with wealth, there's maybe an inconvenient love interest that pops up in the work, school, or social sphere. Um, comes out of the blue. This could also just be a really good friend. And if it's a friend, then the timing's perfect and you've been calling this in. Either way, it feels like you've been calling this in. So there's a little bit of overlap between your money and your love this month. Just make sure that it makes sense. To that end, if you're gonna get married or sign a contract or do business with somebody, make sure that you have the exit and enter strategy already put there. So a prenuptial and then just a contract on how to incorporate or dissolve the entity if you're gonna do a business. Just get all of that laid out and who owns what, everything. Um, with love, it feels like you're, you're able to accomplish something really important in your life, something you love. You could also be calling in someone that you love. Um, these things don't have to be separated. Maybe the two of you work together on something. I just, I see a dream coming to fruition or something that's really important to you. Make sure that the person in your life can celebrate that. Again, if they don't, this is about fighting for your equity. And finally, you can recover from anything. This is the cat landing on its feet because we have Vulcan here, which can reforge, recover, reimagine things. So that mold that you have can be unique. Uh, you can remake it. Um, you don't have to be fitting into everyone else's mold. All right, let's go deeper into the soul path now. I'm really curious. I actually want to start with the four of coins uh, because I want to see what you could do around balance in relationships, 
um, equal pay or reciprocity when it comes to money or just general exchanges and, um, and just opening up more abundance and opportunity. Okay. The Hierophant, okay. The Hierophant in reverse. So for some of you, you may be in um, a structure, organization, or group where um, people have a hard time sort of getting out of old habits or seeing you for who you are because the Hierophant is extremely old fashioned. Um, and so for some of you, you're breaking through the glass ceiling. What I like with this Hierophant is he's a little unconventional. He's actually going into his box of ideas, of tricks, and he's, he's thinking outside of the box. He's opening the box. So what you want to try to do this month is if it doesn't work, you might have to build something. You might have to be like, um, like Vulcan here. You might have to be the one that is putting together the structure. This is how change happens. Um, so you know, maybe you're a minority owned business and you're really trying, you're doing that because you want a voice in the community and you're not seeing it elsewhere and you want to make sure that you can make sure that the, the people underneath you are supported and you can hire like a diverse staff. So this can be about social change. Uh, this could be you trying to, to be the agent of change if necessary, because um, sometimes the old structures won't work. You could also work with um, human resources and legal sort of uh, channels if you need to, to make sure that that balance happens. So you could be an advocate or you could be a creator. It feels like you're shaking the tree a little bit and saying, we need to see some change happen. And that's a good thing ultimately. So you'll have to be a change agent if you want some of that equity is what I'm seeing. And this is also a, a leadership card. So the Hierophant, typically you would see a Pope and you would see people listening to the Pope. So you're the leader in this particular message. So take the lead, take the initiative, speak up, speak out. Even if you're not maybe the final person that's leading the charge, you're one of the voices that helps get things going. So to be an agent of change, you have to step up. And that's what this card is saying. And if you're in a position to help others, help others. If you are the Hierophant, then open channels up so people, because he's opening a channel here for someone else to step into. So if you have earned that sort of higher um, sort of title or opportunity, then do what you can to allow younger generations to benefit from all that you went through, right? Okay. Let's take a look at relationships. And I'm also curious about like the balance in them. So we'll look at justice and the relationships because we have the 10 of cups because we have a soulmate card because we have the dreams coming true so what's the message with respect to um scorpio's relationships this month okay um my guides keep showing me patience so we have the hanged man so for some of you there is just this message that it's hard to wait but it's worth the wait because it feels like something really great is on the horizon um, like I said, you're on the precipice of change. If you have that high expectation for someone, they're calling you, you're calling them, you're waiting for a synchronicity to bring you together. A lot of patience here, um, but the, the wait is worth it, um, is what I would say. Uh, so don't lose track of what you're trying to do and what you're trying to call in and, um, and be patient, okay? That's the main thing that's coming through for relationships in general. Now, if you're in a relationship, the hanged man takes on a different message. The hanged man could show stagnation. Um, if there's uh, so, if you've already met someone, if you're in a relationship, uh, I would say you really want to focus on: is the other person investing enough in it? Um, are they dragging you along? Because that's what I was seeing with the soulmate card was that maybe you could be infatuated with someone else and you're kind of following them, but are they also following back? Are they are they engaging with you? Because I can see the hanged man as sort of being dragged along. So there should be waited out for a second and see what they do, how much they're, how, what are the scales balanced? And that's going to help you make a decision on if it's the right relationship or if that person is taking more than they're giving, right? So equity, we'll fight for the equity, ask for what you need, give them a chance to step it up because we always need to speak up and let people know how they can best show up. And then if they don't do it, you can make whatever choice you want to make with that. Um, if you are single and happy, good for you. <laughs> the hanged man is saying, it's okay. This is a period of more of the same. And it feels like the main focus for all of you right now, all Scorpio, is this. This is going to bring you what you're looking for. 
Um, so how are you tracking to those earlier things that we talked about? What's your soul path? What's, what's, your, what's your passion? Hopefully the two of those are overlapping as well. The more you can get into this sort of authenticity mode, the better. Uh, we don't see it on this particular card because it's very ethereal. I like it. Um, but normally you would see like the star card and the world card. I'm trying to think what else. I, I don't know if temperance is, but the star in the world definitely show nudity in them. And the nudity is not for shock value. It's because there's nothing to hide. So the star sometimes is just this brilliant light. I feel like it's time to just be yourself, be, be true, and let the artifice fall away. All right, let's pull a wild card and see if there's an additional message that's going to help your sign in any aspect of your life this month. And then we're going to meditate quickly, and then I'll go into answering uh, your question that you'll have for me. So um, hold that in your head for just about three minutes or four minutes here, and we'll get to that. First things first, what else do we need to cover for Scorpio for the next six to eight weeks leading into May? Nine of Wands, yay, this is a good card for you. All right, so the Nine of Wands is um, a card that shows that you're very close to having something happen. It's it's near graduation, but not quite there. But it is one that says, if you've come this far, don't give up. You should fight for what it is that you want. We don't see it in this particular illustration. Normally you would see someone that has a bandage on their head, they're standing in front of all the wands. The symbolism there is, I've gotten this far. It cost me a little bit, but I, I survived and I'm going to push through to the 10 of wands and move up that hill. Um, so here we see someone almost kind of moving up a pyramid and they're continuing to do the work. It's kind of a continuation of what we see here with the five of wands. I see great progress being made over the next two month period for you. So you've made a big jump from five of wands to nine of wands. Maybe it's because you decided to like speak up, push through, open up a new channel. Maybe it's because you took uh, matters to the law or to some other authority to help make things happen. And maybe it's just because you're amazing and you worked really hard and pushed through and people are noticing. So don't give up. Nine of wands is saying that you can do it. You're going to get further than you think. And um, you're nobody's, nobody's fool with this card. You can definitely stand up for yourself. Don't let anyone push you around. The card is upright. So you can fight. You can fight back. You can push forward. Um, that's important. So just really be bold, really be strong. And I want you to get to this phase because this is a great card. This is my favorite probably in tarot because it shows that ability to really push through, spread your light, make a big impact. What else could you want for, right? Uh, so anyway, these are beautiful messages for you. One, one quick review and then we're gonna go into the meditation. Then you can ask me a question psychically and I'll answer it. All right, so you might have to break through old structures. This is like the old network, the glass ceiling that you have to kind of find a way to puncture, break through or recreate like we saw with Hephaestus or Vulcan. You might have to be the, the agent of change. The only thing that could hold relationships back, existing ones back is probably stagnation. The only thing that can hold you back is stagnation. If you're not moving, you're not growing. That's something that I talked about yesterday, I think. So you gotta keep moving. Um, and then finally, I really see some amazing progress right on the horizon, so don't give up. Definitely don't give up because it feels like you're much closer to an outcome than you imagine that you might be. So we're gonna quickly meditate. Before we do that, uh, just a couple quick notes. I noticed that there was, first of all, welcome. We have a new member. Um, again, I answered this question earlier, but if you're wondering the difference between being a member here or being a patron, you get emojis here, you get a different colored text and I see it. Um, on Patreon, uh, I, you get the same member perks of being able to ask me questions for Q&A and then anything else that I do for members, it'll go there too. Um, but it's you can pick your own amount. Here with the join button, there's just one. That's the, the only difference. Um, so thank you to the new members that have joined. Thank you to the old members that have been there for a while. Um, I'd love to see you guys join me on social media if you haven't already. Um, I post all these little cards that you see here on social media. I put it on Instagram, Facebook. I put it on my website so you can click on my website. I also do the community tab here on YouTube. I, it usually takes me a week or two, but I'm also posting stuff to TikTok. Um, so follow me on social media if you wanna get reminders. Instagram, I use the most and I push that to Facebook. I also use Twitter and um, I'll break out each of the messages into subtweets and I also remind you the day that I go live. Um, it's N Ashba on Twitter, it's Nicholas Ashba everywhere else. So it's usually just my name. You can follow the link that um, Maria put in the, uh, uh, the chat here if you wanna connect with me. Um, also, if you watch this on replay, in addition to super chat and super stickers, you can use the applaud button. It's right by like and share. And it also puts a little post saying that you, you, you shared a certain amount of 
uh, contribution with me. So I always say thanks to that. Um, and uh, let's see if there's anything else here. Finally, yeah, just one more time before I get into the meditation. Engagement is so important with YouTube and you guys have been doing an amazing job with that. So if you're brand new, hit subscribe. It's something you only do once. Don't hit it multiple times, just once. Um, if you are new to this video as well, you can hit the thumb up once. The thumb up anytime, you can do it one per video, subscribe once in a lifetime. Um, I'm just trying to clarify that because I, I see the numbers go up and down. I'm like, some people are unliking what they just like. So only one like um, per video, but thank you. When it's done, comment and share. That's a really big help. Um, so yeah, if you haven't hit the thumbs up already, do it. It helps me. And um, if you've already done it, thank you so much. It's a very small thing, but it helps people discover. So YouTube sees it as a valuable video. So I see some people adding it right now and I appreciate it. All right, let's take a look now uh, at a quick meditation here. I want to, uh, I want to kind of open up some abundance since we saw the four of coins here. That's something that I did a little bit of I think yesterday, but we're gonna we're gonna help you with this. We wanna help you become the star. So I want you to be a rising star in this meditation. It's gonna be two minutes, stick around. And then after this, I'll answer a question from you. So um, just hold tight and let's focus on opening up um, to abundance and then shining. That's what I wanna do in this meditation. So close your eyes and imagine that you are at the top of the hill, just like you would be if you were looking at the 10 of wands card, or in this case, you could be at the top of this sort of step uh, sort of pyramid, if you will, looks like one of the pyramids in Mexico. Um, so just see yourself at the top of this pyramid and uh, looking out at the horizon, you can see the starry sky all around you. And you feel this sense of um, just love and light coming from within, from the heart space. Um, it starts off as the green light um, because that is the color of the heart. And imagine that you're starting to shoot these rays of light out towards the planet, out towards the galaxy, um, all around you. And you're connecting with this sense of worth, of um, love, of worthiness actually as well. And as this sense of love and self-worth starts to grow, you feel this warm sensation in your body and you see this beautiful, you can actually see it here, this is spark of energy that goes all the way from the firmament into the center of the earth. You're, you're, you're directly in that line of light. So your throat, your third eye, your crown, and then the lower three chakras also light up as everything is connected now in this beam of light. And then the beam also extends into different directions. All the colors coming together, burning into this bright white light. I want you in this moment to think, not only am I capable of and deserving of the change, the movement, the growth, this light that's coming into my life, but I, I want this now, I'm ready for this, I own this. As I play the singing bowl, I just want you to imagine that your self-confidence, your, um, your hope, your vision of the future, it's all getting amplified right now. And you believe and you, and you trust that everything that you've been doing is leading you to this point of being brighter, of being stronger, of being worthy. Close your eyes. If you haven't already, take a nice deep breath. Stretch your arms out. Feel like you're breaking through any sort of energetic barriers that might be around you. Really feel that light that you've brought into your body. Rub your hands together. Put your left hand on your heart, your right hand on top of it. 
and seal in this promise to yourself that you're going to step into that power of creation, that you're going to be able to bring forth everything that you saw and more. If you just joined, you joined at the perfect time because I'm going to be answering a question, not one that you type, but one that you send me. Um, this is the final card, and this is a chance for me to tune into something that I may not have had a chance to do just yet. So um, let's take a look and see what it is that you need help on. So send me the question. It could be about career. It could be about work. Um, you don't type it. Just think about it in this moment. And I'm going to shuffle a couple of more times. And I'll answer it both as a yes, no. And I'll also answer this as um, a chance for you to grow. And I'll, I'll go a little bit deeper. So again, think about the message. Think about the question that you have. And I'm going to pull a card right here. We have the Eight of Wands, really great card. Look at the um, the fact that this is kind of bringing you to the horizon. I like this, um, and this is this this is the stepping stone between what we saw. We had Five of Wands, Eight of Wands, and what was the other one? Nine of Wands. Um, so, as a uh, as a yes, no, this is a yes exclamation point. Yes, it's very good. Um, Eight of Wands shows me not only that there's growth and abundance, but sustainable growth and abundance. Um, if you're a business person you couldn't ask for a much better card than this. It's it's better than even like um, eight of cups means that you might have someone come back, but it might take them a year or two. Eight of wands is something where there's predictable business, there's predictable income, there's pre predictability. So I see reliability, predictability, and movement. Um, it's also a socializing card. So for those of you that are trying to make something happen, um, you want to connect with the people that matter. So whether it's picking up the phone, sending out a newsletter, getting out um, as, as the regulations allow and kind of connecting with people, all of that is part of this. Um, in your own life, this also connects to a few months from now, we're looking at maybe August, and I see a pretty busy period for you over the next few months here. Um, sunny outlook on the horizon, um, and it feels like it's worth the time and the energy that you're investing in things. So don't give up, I really like what I see here. So it's a yes, but the one thing that I would say with the yes is the challenge for you is how can you balance everything on, on your plate right now? Because sometimes something like this can feel overwhelming. So this is where if you are a leader, you're going to need to feel that you can um, delegate as necessary to other people. So um, really good period of time here coming through. Uh, great card to end on. Nice connection here with the star. We even see star-like energy in both of these. So as you, again, kind of are authentic to yourself, we see some really good um, kind of like um, an echoing here from the universe with that as well. So it's a yes, I see abundance, I see growth, I see busyness. There's nothing negative with the, the Eight of Wands. It's one of those really sunny cards. That's why it's illustrated like that. The only thing that I would say with this, and it's really nicely illustrated here, is stay on track. As long as you keep doing what you're doing and stay on track, you're okay. Um, if you get side sidelined a little bit, not so good. And we already saw here that the wild card shows that you're you're going to get to the top of that mountain or the top of the pyramid. So stay on track. We see the pyramid here. Then we see you climbing the pyramid. Um, and then we see what that brings, which is joy, which is happiness, which might be new love or a new friendship. So check, check, check. It all looks good to me. All right. So really great period coming through for you. And if you've had struggle, because some of you might have had some struggle prior to this, um, it feels like you've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Um, some of the breakthrough happens around um, August and September here with eight and nine of wands as well. So uh, the big breakthrough, the big sort of feeling like everything is okay, it's close. We can taste it. You can see it soon, okay? So thank you so much for being present today. One last way that you can connect, uh, that you can give back is uh, by purchasing my book. Um, it's a sci-fi fantasy. So if you don't like sci-fi and fantasy, you can find a different method. But um, it is sci-fi fantasy like Lord of the Rings or Dune. Um, if it was a movie, it would be closer to Blade Runner. So it kind of has this sort of contrast between light and shadows. Um, it's available on my website. You can check the link here uh, that Maria has put up here at, already, and you can go to the pinned one that I have. And um, available worldwide, only in English right now, but um, you can get it across the world. So if you're interested, that's one way to, to do it. Otherwise, everybody that has been kind enough to, um, to give back by doing a super chat, thank you. One last time before we wrap up, if you haven't already liked, hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, you can hit the subscribe button. Um, and this is really important if you're brand new because sometimes I'm randomly in the YouTube algorithm, sometimes I'm not. So I'd love for us to stay connected. So if you enjoyed this or if you're sent this from someone else, 
definitely subscribe if you're unsubscribed. And you can also get notifications by clicking on the bell icon. Later when this is on replay, comment, put some emojis in there, click the share button. All those things help with engagement and that helps serve the, um, the video up. And it costs nothing, but it helps me more than you would ever imagine. So thanks everyone. We had a great show out today and um, I'll be back again on the weekend. Um, I take Saturday off, but I'll be back on Sunday. So we'll be looking at Sagittarius and Capricorn. I'll be posting links for those later so that you can find them. And, um, and then we'll, we'll have another, uh, I just did a mid month checkpoint. I'll have another one in about 10 days time. So you can check out my website for that full schedule. Uh, I like to do collectives occasionally in addition to the sign by sign ones. So, uh, if you haven't already checked it out, it's, it was freshly published yesterday and definitely resonates with the, the current period. So it's on the main channel. It's, it's the featured video. Okay. Everyone take care. Thanks again to Maria for helping with uh, moderation. Uh, I hope you all, uh, all have a wonderful weekend ahead. Again, uh, this, this forecast is for six to eight weeks. So feel free to check back in May. Um, some of it may resonate now. Some of it may resonate then. All right. Take care. And I wish you all the best. And let's see, Apollo's in the background. Usually I like to bring him up, but he's sleeping beauty right now. So I'm not going to just prop him up. He's, he's chilling out. We're going to go for a walk after this. So thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>